Greetings, fellow programmers. We are continuing our introduction to for loops. And in this particular exercise, we are going to write some code so that the user can enter a number into cell B4. And when we click on the check button, our code will read that number from cell B4. Then it will use a for i equals loop to try to determine whether or not that number is a prime number. And it will display the result of that determination using the message box. And as you can see in the instructions, recall that a number is prime if it cannot be evenly divided by a number greater than one and less than the number. Um, so uh, anything divisible by two or three or four or any other number other than one um, would be would not be a prime number but if you can't divide anything into it evenly without a remainder then it's a prime number so this is a good opportunity to test our skills with using the 4i equals loop so we are going to go into design mode and uh, double click on the check button and pops us over to the Visual Basic Editor. Let me resize the window a little bit. So we're going to declare some variables here. So we're going to do our normal thing of typing option explicit so that we don't have any problems with misspelled, misspelled variable names. Now, uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to read that number that the users entered into a uh, local variable, which we're going to call n. So in the dim n as integer. All these, uh, this whole issue of a prime number only applies to integers, obviously. And then uh, let's go back to Excel for a second, and that is cell B4. So I'm going to say n equals range uh, B4. So now I can refer to that number as n. And now we're going to declare another looping variable, i, as integer. And so now we're ready to do our loop. And what we're going to do is we're going to um, loop through the divisors and uh, see if these different values of i that we test will divide evenly into n. So we're going to say for i equals 2 to n over 2, and then next i down here at the bottom. Uh, a couple things. <clears throat> uh, I like to, whenever I write a loop, when I write the first line of the loop, I like to immediately go down and write the bottom of the loop, um, just to make sure I don't forget it, and uh, make sure that, uh, especially when you're doing do loops, it allows you to make sure that you have a proper exit condition. Eh, it's just a habit I've gotten into. And so the other thing is you'll notice uh, I'm looping from 2 to n over 2. Um, uh, you don't want to start at 1. Everything's divisible by 1, so you want to start at 2. But why am I stopping at n over 2? I, I could go to n minus 1. You don't want to go to n because any number is always divisible by itself. You could theoretically go to n minus 1. But if you think about it, once you get to a number larger than the number itself divided by 2, there's no way it would ever divide evenly into it. So we'll save ourselves a few microseconds of computing by stopping at n over 2. If you get to that point, then there's, like I say, you're done. Um, so now inside the loop, we need to use an if statement to test to see if, the, if I divides evenly into n. And the way that we do that, or one way to do that, is to use the mod mod operator. And we do it like this. If um, we'll put in parentheses n mod i equals 0, then we don't have to have parentheses here, but sometimes it helps to clearly delineate your conditional expression. So MOD is a mathematical operator. Uh, you would use it to, it's called a binary operator. So you give it an integer on the left and an integer on the right. And it returns the remainder after inter 
integer division of the number on the left divided by the number on the right. So in this case, n divided by i. The MOD operator will return the remainder. So if I did, for example, 5 mod 3, it would return a value of 2. If I did 5 mod 4, it would return a value of 1. If I did 5 mod 2, it would return a value of 1 because um, uh, 2 times 2 is 4, and the remainder would be 1. Um, 5 minus 4 is 1. But, uh, but something like 8 mod 4 would be 0 because there's no remainder after division. So if we take n mod i, compare that to 0, if that is true, then um, we have found a number that divides evenly into n. At this point, we can definitively conclude that uh, the number is not prime. So we can say message box uh, the number is not prime. Okay. Um, now, here's where it gets a little tricky. Um, when I go over this exercise with students, uh, a lot of them, I used to give this example on, a, on exams, or this, this particular exercise is a, a problem on exams. And a lot of students would, would type else, the number is prime, um, which is not true. If you find a number that divides evenly into it, you know for a fact it's not prime, and in fact you don't need to continue. But if, but if the number does not divide evenly into it, you haven't determined anything. Um, you've determined that, that, it's, that you can't make a decision based on that number, but you need to keep going. And so, <clears throat> uh, for the case where that doesn't hold true, we need to keep going. But if, if we do encounter this condition, if i does divide evenly into n, uh, we're going to throw up the answer, and then we're gonna do, I'm going to show you a little trick here. We're going to do exit sub. Exit sub means um, it just stops any further computation inside that sub. There are no more iterations of the loop, nothing else. It's, it's done. It fully exits the loop. Then we're going to do end if. And uh, that's basically it. Um, let's get rid of some little spacing here. So uh, at this point, um, uh, as we're going through this loop, if we at any point in those in that iteration, we have found a number that divides evenly into n. We know the number is not prime, and we and we stop. We exit the sub. We exit the loop. We exit everything. However, if we get to this point, if we finish the loop, and we have not exited by virtue of finding a, an even divisor and throwing up that message box. We know the only way we could possibly get to this point is if we did not find a number that divides evenly into n. Into n. Therefore, we can conclude that, um, just cheating a little bit, copying and pasting that, um, we can conclude that the number is prime. Because, once again, the only way you would get to this line is if you had completed this loop uh, through the full set of iterations without ever encountering a number that divided evenly into it. Therefore, we know that it's prime number. So let's check it out. Save our changes. Go back to Excel. Exit design mode. The number 24 is clearly not prime. There are a ton of things that will divide evenly into that. But let's try 23. I believe that's a prime number. Yep. How about some other prime numbers? 17. Uh, I'm going to take a wild guess here. Nine, oh, 93 is not prime. That's divisible by 3. Um, let's try something like 7. Or something else pretty obvious. Let's do 9. Not prime. So seems to work uh, just fine. So let's... Um, what I'd like to do now is um, I'm going to give it, let me think of a number that would be a good way to illustrate this. Let, let's do um, let's do something that's divisible by 5. Let's do 15. Now let's do 25. How about that? So now I want to go in and put in a breakpoint. I just want to illustrate the 
<clears throat> how this works logically. So I'm going to just step through this in the debugger. So n is equal to 25 and uh, i is equal to 2. So n mod i is equal to 1. And so that's not going to hold true. So it keeps going. And the next time through the loop, uh, i is 3 and n mod i is 1. Um, and it keeps going. And uh, now i is 5. So at this point, this expression should be true. And so it will go into this point, pop up the message box, and then exit sub, and we're done. And so now let's try it with, a, I'm going to put in the number 7, which is prime. And uh, let's do it again, but with a prime number. So in this case, I'm going to uh, step through it. So it's a 2, 3, 4, whoops, 5. Um, n equals, uh, oh, because it's not going all the way up to the number, it's going to the number divided by 2. So therefore, it, it got to 7 divided by 2 is 3, and so that worked. Let, let's, let's try that. That was a little quick. Let's, um, let's do something a little larger, like 17. So that should iterate up to 17 divided by 2 is uh, 8.5, so 9. It should stop when it gets to 9. Um, so let's try that one. Um, here we go. Uh, I is equal to 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and oh, I guess it stops at 8. And at this point, no chance of that ever being prime, or not prime, excuse me. So pops up the answer, and we're done. So that's how you use a for loop to determine whether or not a number is prime.